I will show you how to make your player interact with another character in your game and also create a shader so that you can replace the colours in the sprite and make modifications without having to repaint your sprites. You will also create an interactable component so that you can reuse this in other areas of your game. So let's begin, just head to the scenes folder, in characters folder, add a new folder and call this guide, click OK, and then go new 2D scene and rename this to guide and just save that scene in scenes, characters and guide folder and then just save that. And for the guide, we won't use a character body 2D because the player will just interact with the guide so that we can show the dialogue balloon. So add another child node to guide and search for animated sprite 2D, create that. And then in the 2D view, go to sprite frames and new sprite frames, click that. And for the default animation, let's rename that to idle and set this to be auto load. Then open the sprite frames and choose basic character sprites and click open. Let's zoom in and choose the top two here. The horizontal parameter and vertical parameter is already set for this. Click add two frames and let's just play that and leave looping on and just turn frames per second down to three. So I'm using the same character sprite for the player as I'm using for the guide. So let's replace some of the colors in the sprite for the guide so that you can differentiate between the player character and the guide character. So on animated sprite 2D in the inspector, let's scroll down until we get to material, create a new shader material, and then for shader, click the empty option and choose new shader and leave type as shader, mode as canvas item, and we'll call this replace color.gd shader and create that. Then open the shader and we can delete this part here because we don't need that method and we don't need the vertex method. We will only use the fragment method because we are just going to modify the color. So let's begin writing some shader code to replace these two colors in our sprite. So this part here and this outline here. So after shader type canvas item, use uniform, vector four, original color zero and source color. And for the second color, use uniform vector four, original one, and this is also a source color. For the third parameter, use uniform vector four, replace zero, and source color. And for the fourth parameter, use uniform vector four, replace one, and source color as well. Then back in the shader material, let's just set these shader parameters. So for the original zero, just click that and then click the color dropper here and zoom in and just click the outline. And then for the next color, choose the character color here in the middle. Then for the outline, let's replace that color. So we'll just choose something different for now. And then for the color to replace original one, we'll just pop this color in for now as well. Then in the fragment function, use vector four color equals texture, pass in texture, and then the UV. And then say if distance, which is the color at that UV, original zero is less than or equal to 0 0.1, then replace the color. If it's not, then just assign the color from the texture back. So we say color equals and then color here and just put our semicolons in and as you can see for the original color zero we are now replacing it with the replace zero let's just improve this script a little bit more use a constant float and say precision equals 0 0.1 and just replace that there now we need to handle the second color so we'll modify this a little further so we can handle an array of colors. So I'm going to create a new function and call it tech or replace underscore color and pass in the color. Then I'll use vector four original colors equals vector four again, and then pass in original 
zero and then the original one then create an array to hold the replace colors array size two with replace zero and replace one then create a for loop and say integer i equals zero and if i is less than array size which is two i plus plus then copy this if statement and just paste that in there then copy original colors and just put i in there and then copy replace colors and just put i in there as well and just make that then after the for loop just return color and then back in the fragment function we can just say color is the function replace color texture and then pass texture and uv and then if we look at our sprite we can see that we are now replacing both of those colors so it's now possible to modify the shader further and add more original colors and more replace colors so that if you want to use the same sprite but add more modifications it will be possible using this type of shader so now that the shader is complete head over to the scenes and components folder and just scroll down until you see the interactable component and just drag that onto our guide then on the interactable component just right click add a child node and search for collision shape 2d and then for the shape just click new circle shape and just make this a lot wider so that the player can enter this area here we have made the interactable component in a previous tutorial so we've already configured the collision layers to interact with the player and fire the signals when the player walks in the area we want to show a sprite here with the letter e in it to show the player that they need to press that key on the keyboard to begin the dialogue to so go to scene new scene and then choose user interface scene and then for the control call this interactable label component then save that scene and go to scenes components and save it as interactable label component scene add another child node and search for texture X. then in the texture property choose new atlas texture and open that then head back up to assets ui and basic ui sprites and drag that into the atlas property then click edit region and with auto slice selected in this area here just zoom in and choose this option here then click close then add another child node and search for label in the text use capital e and then scroll down until we have fonts here then quick load and choose zx palm variation here and just open that let's zoom in and for our font size choose eight then click back on texture rect and let's just resize this so scroll back up and for transform size resize this to be 18 by 18 then click back on the interactable label component control and just zoom out and then for the anchor points just choose top left and then zoom in then for size choose 18 by 18 then click on label and scroll down to size and make the width 18 and then just make y 18 as well and then scroll up and for horizontal alignment choose center then scroll back down and for size let's just reduce the size and then for position on the y axis let's just reposition that here and that finishes our interactable label now head over to the guide and then go to scenes components folder and drag the interactable label component onto our scene so i'm just going to reposition the animated sprite 2d and then reposition the interactable component as well and then the interactable label component will just put about here and that's complete so I'll click the guide scene and let's right click and attach the script and we'll just save the guide script in the characters and guide folder so I'll create that in the guide script let's just create our first interactable component on ready variable and then we'll do the same for the interactable label component too then override the ready method and then get the interactable component and register the interactable activated signal and connect that then we will create a function called on interactable 
activated, which is a return type of void. And then we can get the interactable label component and then just display the label when the player is in the area. Then back in the ready method, get the interactable component and register the interactable deactivated signal and connect that. Then create another function called on interactable deactivated, return type void, then get the interactable label component and hide it. Then back in the ready method, call interactable component and hide that by default as the guide enters the scene tree. Now head over to scenes and test folder and duplicate the test scene game screen UI. So I'll duplicate that, but call it test scene guide dialog and then just duplicate that. Then open the test scene and then rename this to be test scene guide dialog and then save that. And then back in the guide script, just copy interactable label component and paste that over interactable component hide. Then go to 2D scene and then let's run this current scene. And as you can see, we've got our player here and the guide here. So let's just move towards the guide and we can see that we've now interacted with the guide and we have now an indicator here so that the player knows to press the E key. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial on how to create a shader to replace colors inside of other sprites. We have also created an interactable component so the player can interact with other characters and show information on how to respond. In the next tutorial, I will show you how to create a dialog balloon so that you can communicate with the character. If you like what you've seen in this tutorial, please remember to hit like and subscribe to receive future updates of my other tutorials. Thank you for watching.